Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting baby Irish wolfhound puppies! Tales of old where packs of huge tall Irish wolfhounds bound across the rural countryside, hunting down animals such as the now extinct wolves of Ireland. In fact, stories claim that it was a pack of Irish wolfhounds who killed the very last Irish wolf in 1876 on the slopes of Mount Leinster. We've learned everything about the giant adults in our hugely popular 3.7 million view episode. But what about raising giant Irish wolfhound babies? If you don't do it correctly, you can injure them for life. So this is a super important guide to making sure your giant baby Irish wolfhound grows into a healthy and happy adult. So don't go away. The Irish Wolfhound, ancient, mystical, extremely tall and noble looking like a wise old wizard. His story indeed goes back hundreds of years, but it's not as straightforward as you might think. What if I was to tell you that the modern day Irish Wolfhound is in fact a recreation of the sadly now extinct old Irish Wolfhound? But first, I'm here today to meet some unbelievably majestic modern-day Irish wolfhounds in what can only be described as one of the UK's most incredibly naturally beautiful areas, the Peak District. The Stonely Irish wolfhounds, owned by Claire Morehouse and Jason Mather, have some of the UK's most healthy and beautiful Irish wolfhounds and are all here to meet the Animal Watch viewers today. Nice to see you again. You too. Welcome back to Austin, the Irish Wolfhounds. Come and meet everybody again. Yeah, I can't wait. Come on. Do, do, do. Boop, boop, boop. Come on in. Okie dokie. Oh Come on. my goodness. Look what Lina, we Lina. I walked in and, as usual, was astounded by their sheer size, but also of their gentleness and calmness. Very few dog breeds can live so peacefully and amicably together as a giant pack inside one house. Hi! Hello, babies! Hello! Despite the size, they're just so lovely and calm and charming and placid and you can find them so relaxing to have them around the house with you. We got the big boy. You really are the wizard, aren't you? You really are Gandalf. Watch your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of you are going to get me. <laughs> this is me. This is me. This is Big Butt. <laughs> He's very wet right now. <laughs> the wolfhounds of old were used as hunting dogs and were suggested to be immense, but were in fact no larger than a German shepherd. The last wolf in Ireland was killed in County Carlow in 1786. It is thought to have been killed by a pack of Irish wolfhounds. After this, the remaining wolfhounds stayed in the hands of a few families, and these were said to be the last of their race before this old line sadly died out. So if what we have now is in fact not the true old Irish wolfhound, but a modern creation, what is it that we see today? The modern day recreation is in fact a mixture of the biggest examples of the Scottish Deerhound and the Great Dane. Into the mix also went the Duchess of Newcastle's Borzoi, who had proved his wolf hunting abilities earlier in his native Russia. For an outbreed, a huge shaggy dog was added, which may have possibly been a Tibetan Mastiff. But today I wasn't here to sit around with the adults. I was here for something far smaller, if you can describe it as small, that is. And very fuzzy and cute. Now you've met all the adults again, I have got a little surprise for you. What? Outside. What is it? Let's go see. I love surprises. Come on, come, come on. on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh my God, puppies! Hello! Hello! Look at these! They are so nippy! 
Wow! Hello! Hi, baby! Oh, we've got hiccups! He's got hiccups! He's got hiccups! Now, giant breed babies cannot be raised the same as normal-sized puppies. There is a very important set of rules you need to follow if you want to bring one into your life. And Claire was here to give her advice and wisdom to the Animal Watch followers. Hello, and look what we've got today. We've got baby Hi. Irish wolfhounds and they're having a little bit of an argument. <laughs> look at them. They're having a little, little sibling argument. I think that's hilarious. So who have we got here? Uh, so we got two puppies in this litter. We got Rosa and Paddy. Okay, one boy, old, one girl. How old are they at the moment? Today they are eight weeks old. Okay, big. Eight week old. Big. Yeah, nine kilograms. Nine kilograms. These are like a full grown dog already. These are a giant breed. Yeah. And they need lots of protecting as they're growing. The main difference between giant breeds and other breeds, puppies wise, is the rate at which they grow. So these are not much bigger than, you know, a golden retriever when they're born. It's the rate at which they grow. So they need a lot of sleep. They need a very, very good diet, nutritionally dense diet. They need a flat surface, you know, non-slip surface to protect the joints, make sure that they're not falling off any steps. This one's biting my leg. Get Little off. piranhas, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, make sure they're not falling off any steps, not jumping on any sofas. You've really, really got to protect these joints because they grow so fast. And apart from that, they sleep a lot. You see, sometimes people get a puppy and you'll see them taking the puppy everywhere. They want to take the puppy out, you know, to, to restaurants, to visit family members, to do all this stuff. Can't do that with these. No. You've got to let them sleep. You've got to let them grow. But you've got to also include the socialisation because that's really, really important because you're going to have a huge dog. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that you do the socialisation and you do the training, but you've got to do it just little and often just enough so that they can still sleep and they can still mm. grow so basically if somebody takes one of these home and just starts taking it out on walks they're, they're going to be damaging it if yeah. they take it on great long walks yeah. you don't want to be overly walking these dogs when they're really young you shouldn't really be letting them do anything too intense until at least 12 months but then you've got to look at the individual dog as well because if you've got a bigger male that's still got a lot of growing to do at 12 months then you're gonna to have to be waiting until they might be 18 yeah. months old. Now let's talk about how precious these dogs are. Now Irish Wolfhound, pretty rare, would yeah. you agree? Yeah, less than 300 registered last year. Wow, and this this is in UK? Yes. Right, okay, and, and you've got a fair whack of that, haven't you? Yeah, we've got a lot of them, <laughs> but they're so difficult to breed. When these guys were born, they were around about 500 grams, uh, which is half a kilogram. Their mum weighs 76 kilograms. So she can very easily, accidentally suffocate them or just break them by right. standing on them, laying on them. It's hard work, really, really exhausting. So you cannot leave mum alone with the puppies for seconds. You know, you can't just think, oh, I'm gonna just pop out and make a cup of coffee. Yeah. You can come back and puppy can be suffocated and dead. So the rarity of this breed, is it because they're quite hard to breed? Is that why they're so rare? I think partially it is. Secondary, they're a huge dog. You need a bigger house, you need bigger dog beds, you need a big car, it's bigger vet bills. So you know, people it's bigger choose feeding not, bill. So people choose not to have them because they're just so huge. Yeah. So what have they got here? Uh, they've just got licky mats. So, I mean, we've got loads and loads of different enrichment for them just to just to, to give our hands a break, really, from yeah. being bitten, because they are very mouthy. They test everything with the mouths. With your adults, how often do you walk the adults? So in the morning uh, and in the evening, they get at least 40 minutes, but that's just sort of like the, the bog standard, what they require. We like to do more than that with them as well. On top of the two walks a day, we'll do an extra walk where we might take three or four of them, where we go somewhere more relaxed. We, we class the, the morning and the evening walk as like a necessary walk and then in between that we like to do fun walks. Yeah. We like to visit cafes and pubs, farmers markets and yeah. stuff like that. All goes towards their socialisation as well because we're always socialising them no matter how old they mm. are. You know, we're all, we've always got them out in public. If you don't socialise them, um, do they become very wary? Wolfhounds are aloof, which doesn't mean aggressive. 
and it doesn't mean fearful. They are wary of strangers anyway. They're going to look at you and why do you want to talk to me? Right. But firstly, have you got any treats? Because if you've got yeah. treats, they don't care who you are. <laughs> and then after that, they're going to figure out what you want from them. And if you if there's nothing there, then you know they, they won't pay any attention to you anyway. Yeah. Uh, they're not like a Labrador at yeah. uh, uh, Wolfhounds. They're not going to come up wagging the tail and want to be your best friend. Yeah, so what you're trying to do is bring them out more of their shell just so they can be pets and you can take them out in public and, you know, they, yeah. they'll just be generally nicer in public. By yeah. socialising yeah. them, you're just yeah. encouraging them to be... Yeah, you want them to be happy in the, their environment, where, yeah. wherever that environment might be. And you've got to remember that public love them so you've got to really really socialize yeah. them and because they are aloof you've got to work that little bit extra to make sure yeah. that you know they're going to be able to deal with every situation they've still got that instinct to be quite prey driven haven't they yeah. so when you take them out on walks can you lose them if something goes by will they disappear or will they come back again are they quite I was very good they are very prey driven but we do enough training so that they understand commands like leave it mm. wait and they've all got very good recall. So a bit like the um, Great Dane, um, who's very stubborn too and quite aloof. Yeah. It's so important to get that training in young. Very stubborn, but we find that you don't instruct a wolfhound what to do, you ask it. What's the energy level of an Irish wolfhound puppy compared to a shepherd? Less, but different. So we, we've got shepherds, we've got wolfhounds. The shepherds tend to be more constantly energetic with little sleeps. The wolfhounds, more time asleep, but when they're awake, you've got a bigger bounding puppy that's got no breaks, that doesn't know how to turn corners, that's gonna try and eat your sofa, that when it's mouthing you, it's gonna hurt because it's a big dog with big teeth. We need to talk about vet fees because also, because we don't want these dogs to go to anyone. They have to go to perfect homes. Your vet bills are going to be pretty big. Big. You've been in the vet quite a lot, especially when they get end of days, that yeah. sort of last year of their life. It can be pretty expensive. And of yeah. course, I imagine insurance companies aren't going to be that great, are they? Or well, are they? for us to insure all our dogs, um, it, it would work out between 10 and 12,000. Our vet bills are usually between 10 and 20,000. Mm. On a good year, we once did have a good year, it was only 5,000, so we take the chance. Today had been amazing and I thoroughly enjoyed meeting Claire and the puppies. It is unbelievable to how rare and precious this breed is, and obtaining a puppy can entail a long wait sometimes. What is most important is how careful you must raise one of these elegant giant breeds. Slow and steady all the way, and you will be rewarded with a calm and loyal companion who will sleep calmly at your side, walk loyally by your side, and bring a warm and gentle energy into your home. A true wizard amongst dogs, and a real treasure to all who are lucky enough to have one enrich their home and family life. Well, if you'd like to find out more about Irish Wolfhounds, I cannot recommend anyone else more highly than Claire. We'll put the website underneath. You can go on your Instagram account, you've got Facebook, yeah. TikTok. She's got an amazing TikTok account. She does all this fabulous natural dog food too, don't you? Yeah. So if you want something that's really natural and healthy, you can go on your TikTok and just remember, it's gonna be pretty hard to get one of these puppies, but if you have one, they will absolutely steal your heart, won't yeah. they? So if you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner and be sure to tune in every week we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs wolves animal rescue and conservation and watch our previous episode on the adult dogs i will put the link at the top so bye from now bye from a very little nippy girl who's absolutely adorable <laughs>